report has revealed that Lagos ranks as the fourth worst city to live in worldwide. Hi, welcome to what's happening. This at the top 10 stories. At number one, the Economist Intelligence Unit's 2023 Global Livability Report has revealed that Lagos ranks as the fourth worst city to live in worldwide. The report considered various factors across five categories and cited improvements in healthcare and education in Lagos. However, it also highlighted the persistent issue of corruption. In 2022, Lagos was the second worst livable city after holding the position for two consecutive years and was only behind the mask which has been held down on the list by social unrest, terrorism and conflict. At number two, Vice President Kashim Shatima held a closed door meeting with Bill Gates, co-chairman of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, Aliko Dangote, chairman of the Dangote Foundation and members of the Nigerian Governors Forum. The meeting reportedly aims to explore collaboration between the foundations and the Nigerian government, particularly in the health and education sectors. Gates is visiting Nigeria to meet leaders and partners tackling health and development challenges. At number three, the Debt Management Office has cautioned the federal government against further borrowing, citing an unsustainable debt service to revenue ratio of 73.5% for this year. The DMO recommends focusing on revenue generation and increasing the country's tax revenue to GDP ratio for a sustainable debt situation. Furthermore, the DMO call for a focus on revenue mobilization initiatives and reforms to increase the country's tax revenue to GDP ratio. At number four, the Ogun State Election Petition Tribunal has scheduled July 4th for the commencement of the hearing of the petition filed by Ladi Adebutu, the governorship candidate of the People's Democratic Party. Adebutu is challenging the victory of Governor Dapu Abiodun of the All Progressive Congress in the March 18 governorship poll. At number five, the Kano State House of Assembly has confirmed 17 out of the 19 commissioner nominees sent by Governor Abba Kabir Yusuf. The confirmation came during Thursday's plenary session with two nominees absent due to their participation in a holy pilgrimage in Saudi Arabia. The state's government will assign portfolios and swear in the confirmed nominees as members of the state's executive council. At number six, Uber Nigeria has announced fare adjustment to help drivers cope with increased operating costs resulting from rising fuel prices and inflation. Uber, in a statement attributed to Tokbe Akim Wumi, country manager for Uber in Nigeria, said the fare adjustment is designed to help drivers cover rising operating costs and is part of the ongoing effort to support their driver community. The company also said it is constantly monitoring local dynamics to see what changes can be implemented and when. At number seven, the National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control has uncovered a warehouse in Abba Abia State where the G-Man organic energy drink was being revalidated. This is coming on the heels of the arrest of six suspected counterfeiters over the importation, distribution and sale of unregistered and expired G-Man organic energy drinks in Delta and Anambra states. In Lagos, the agency also assured the public that all noodles produced in Nigeria, including Indomie, are safe for consumption, following investigations into the presence of ethylene oxide or its metabolites in noodles and seasonings. At number eight, Air Vice Marshal Hassan Abubakar has taken over as the 22nd Chief of Air Staff. His appointment was announced by President Bola Tinubu, who recently retired and replaced the service chiefs. During the handing over and taking over ceremony, the former Chief of Air Staff, Air Marshal Oludayo Amo, acknowledged the challenges faced during his tenure and urged his successor to lead the service to greater heights. At number nine, a plank market in Songo, Ata, Ogun State was engulfed in flames on Thursday morning, causing significant damage. Traders at the market were destroyed as they witnessed their livelihoods being destroyed. The cause of the fire is still unknown and the fire service officials were working tirelessly to extinguish the flames. The local community is coming together to support the affected traders during this difficult time. Finally, at number 10, the head of the International Monetary Fund has announced that rich countries have successfully reallocated $100 billion from the institution to combat climate change and poverty in developing nations. Ahead of the summit, France and Japan announced that they would redeploy 30% of their SDRs for this purpose. The plan, initiated in 2019, aimed to recycle funds to support vulnerable economies. The IMF has surpassed its targets, contributed to global efforts to address pressing challenges. That's all for today. See you next time on What's Happening.